Green Cape works at the interface between government, business and academia to identify and remove barriers to economically viable infrastructure solutions in the green economy. In any economy, the building blocks are the same. A source of energy, water, food, a waste management system and transportation networks. Our market intelligence reports look at all these sectors. If we can unlock the opportunities identified in these reports, we will go a long way in achieving our ambition towards a thriving and prosperous Africa mobilized by the green economy. The main focus of our market intelligence reports relates to the key and emerging opportunities in that sector. These reports are written for investors and they contain information on funding opportunities, regulatory and legislative changes that have taken place over the previous years, and support offered by Green Cape and our network of strategic partners. The large-scale renewable energy sector refers to power plants above 10 megawatt capacity that produces electricity from renewable resources. And it mostly refers to wind and solar PV in South African context. The main driver of renewable energy in South Africa has been the Renewable Energy Independent Power Producer Procurement Program, or REAP in short. There are multiple opportunities that's opened up. The first opportunity was due to the changes in the Section 2 of the Electricity Act, which enabled the projects of up to 100 megawatt to be installed without requiring a generation license. So the latest discussions around that is that the 100 megawatt cap will actually be removed and this will allow much larger systems to be installed. And this is especially attractive to the mining industry who is reliant on very high power consumption and has been negatively affected by the load shedding we experienced in 2022. The expected growth in the renewable energy sector will also enable us to focus on local manufacturing, which will assist South Africa with, with the just energy transition. With the expected shift from coal power to renewable energy, there's expected to be a lot of job losses. So that's why it is important to transition these workers and these industries towards something cleaner and greener like renewable energy. These potential renewable energy opportunities will also open up the market for local manufacturing and an increase in job creation. 2022 saw the highest level of load shedding on record and is expected to continue into the future. So that's driving a lot of demand for renewable energy, but also for energy storage. So renewable energy and energy storage goes hand in hand in order to address that. There is also an opportunity in green hydrogen. This is largely driven by European countries and the discussion is around how they can decarbonize their economies. We use the term energy services to describe three interrelated market segments, namely rooftop solar voltaic, solar PV for short, energy efficiency and energy storage. These three markets are also supported by the energy finance sector, which also provides opportunities for investors. The growth in the energy services market is driven by above inflation rises in the price of electricity, this coupled with the national insecurity, namely load shedding, which means we don't always have access to this electricity. Compare this to then the decreasing costs of energy service technologies means that these markets are increasingly attractive to invest in. We also have an increasingly enabling regulatory environment for these markets, as well as well-adapted financing options. Rooftop PV remains the largest and fastest growing opportunity this is due to positive regulatory movement, positive investor sentiment, as well as recovery in the commercial, agricultural and industrial sectors. The annual added capacity in 2022 was 500 to 700 megawatts. We still expect this market to reach a cap of 7.5 gigawatts by 2035 to a total value of 75 billion rand. Energy storage, in particular lithium ion batteries, continue to surge in the commercial, industrial and agricultural sectors. This is due to the flexibility of application use cases, increased load shedding and the rising cost of diesel, which 
is resulting in energy storage playing an increasing role for backup purposes. The national market is expected to reach a total value of 31 billion Rand by 2035, which represents an installed battery capacity of 6.5 gigawatt hours. In energy efficiency, opportunities lie in smart meters and aggregation. These tie into trends in both the public and private sector, including energy performance certificates, load curtailment programs, and load aggregation for multiple users in building complexes. The national market value for smart meters is expected to reach 40 billion Rand by 2035. This is based on an estimate of 100,000 to 300,000 upgrades per year. The South African mobility industry is currently undergoing a transition to zero emission vehicles with a particular emphasis on electric vehicles. This is guided with regards to policy by the South African Green Transport Strategy, which aims to electrify 5% of South Africa's vehicle fleet to EVs by 2050. The four key market investment opportunities that have been identified in the 2023 EVMIR are the electrification of public transport vehicles, micromobility, private passenger vehicles and industrial vehicle fleets. The policy drivers for electric bus manufacturing in South Africa is the mandate of the DTIC that 80% of bus bodies be manufactured locally. The second is the 25% customs duty and ad valorem taxes which are applied to the importation of electric vehicles in South Africa which represents a cost saving if they are manufactured locally as opposed to being imported. There exists a market opportunity for an electric bus manufacturing company to set up a local manufacturing plant in South Africa to supply electric buses to local bus fleets. As an example, Golden Arrow Bus Services, based in Cape Town, has recently completed a year-long pilot study involving two BYD electric commuter buses, as well as the installation of rooftop solar PV to enable the charging of electric buses with renewable energy. The pilot project has gone well and they have, in addition, ordered a 65-seater electric commuter bus in September 2023 and are looking to procure 60 electric buses annually thereafter. In the minibus taxi industry, there exists a market opportunity for the local manufacturing of electric minibus taxis. A South African EV startup is looking to bring the first electric minibus taxi into the South African market in 2023. They will be undergoing field test pilots with local minibus taxi associations to test the feasibility of an electric minibus taxi in local operating conditions. The electric micromobility industry has shown growth in 2022. This is due to the affordability of electric micro vehicles such as two and three wheelers, which have seen uptake in the last mile delivery industry in South Africa such as e-commerce deliveries, fast food and grocery delivery services. The electric private passenger vehicle market has shown limited growth due to the high price of electric private passenger vehicles. The cheapest EV in the segment is 800,000 Rand or more and this will continue to be a market barrier to EV uptake until an affordable electric vehicle in the range of 300,000 to 500,000 is made available on the South African market. This is a driver for the local manufacturing of electric passenger vehicles as it is hoped that this will help to bring down the price barrier. The electric industrial vehicle fleet market consists of mining, agriculture, tourism and freight and logistics. Advances in battery range technology have made the electrification of this market segment possible. With regards to electric vehicle fleets, advances in battery technology have made the electrification of mining, agriculture, tourism and freight and logistics fleets possible. The South African agricultural sector is continuing to grow and is one of the most exciting sectors in South Africa. It experienced a 14.7% growth in 2020 and continued 8.8% year-on-year growth in 2021. It's also one of the only sectors in South Africa which has experienced job creation with a 1% year-on-year growth um, to 874,000 jobs. This is particularly impressive when compared to other sectors which have been negatively impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. There are two positive indicators for the sector which show that there is space for more growth in the coming years. The first being weather forecasts which predict good rains for the next planting season. 
The second being strong machinery sales figures, which show that farmers are confident enough in the sector to make long-term investments in movable assets. The opportunities in sustainable agriculture exist through reducing input costs, either by greater resource efficiency or alternative production methods, protecting productive land whilst increasing the quality and quantity of output, as well as introducing circularity in agricultural production. These opportunities exist in renewable energy applications, regenerative agriculture, smart farming and circular agriculture. There are a number of green shoots in the agricultural sector which indicate that it is willing to make the shift to more sustainable agricultural production. An exciting development has been the completion of the Agriculture and Agro-Processing Master Plan, which pulls in stakeholders such as government, civil society, industry associations and academia, and lays a roadmap for a thriving, sustainable agricultural sector. The water and sanitation market in South Africa is really driven by three major factors. The first being that South Africa is a water-scarce country, driven by climatic change. The second is looking to build a resilient and reliable water supply. At present, we have a over-reliance on surface water, and we need to look at augmenting our water supply to different sources. The third factor being the need to provide safe water and sanitation to all citizens in South Africa. Water is a highly regulated sector and within the past year there have been different interventions as well as policy changes that have occurred. There has been a focus on public-private sector collaborations and this has resulted in the Development Bank of South Africa looking to establish a water partnerships office to help municipalities to gain funding for infrastructure projects. The Department of Water and Sanitation is also in the process of establishing a National Water Resources Infrastructure Agency. This is to finance and secure sufficient bulk water supply now and in the future, and particularly important for the sanitation sector and the beneficiation of wastewater sludge. The norms and standards set minimum requirements for the treatment of organic waste for facilities that process over 10 tonnes per day. In the 2023 Water Market Intelligence Report, we've identified three main municipal sector opportunities. The first one looks at the upgrading of public sector infrastructure, the second opportunity looks at the alternative disposal or beneficiation of wastewater sludge. The third opportunity looks at the implementation of renewable energy and energy efficiency interventions at a wastewater treatment works. A major driver influencing the opportunities discussed this year is the reinstatement of the Green Drop program, which evaluates the state of wastewater treatment works across the country following a seven year hiatus. Following the publication of this report, the data strongly emphasized the need for infrastructure and the maintenance of wastewater treatment works. Additionally, increased load shedding and higher electricity costs are a major driver for resource and electricity efficiency interventions. There are three regulatory drivers for the beneficiation of sludge, which are liquids have been banned from disposal at landfills nationally, and the country is planning to reduce the volume of organic solid waste to landfills by 2030 and an increase in landfill gate fees. At Green Cape, we feel positive about the developments and the outlook of the water sector. We welcome the publication of the Green Drop Report and the upcoming Blue Drop Report and believe that these publications are instrumental in advising on infrastructure developments as well as eliminating corruption at all levels of the water sector. There is also renewed focus in the um, public-private partnership sector and believe that these are welcomed as we can support the formation of bankable projects that can be funded by the private sector and implemented in the public sector for upgrades as well as maintenance projects.